no services. Uh, this often leads to homelessness. Causes of homelessness are often related to family conflict and dysfunction, abuse, health, emotional issues, and more recently, the, the impact from the economic recession in which more people and families are losing their jobs, their homes. Despite the fact that St. Tammany Parish is the second most affluent parish in the state, we still have about 9% or 21,000 people living in poverty. 8,000 of those are children under the age of 18. Before I run out of time, I know I cannot talk about boys without talking about Miss Willie Peretti. Willie has been on that round table of individuals that helped form voice since the beginning. She became a Broadway board member and is both instrumental and extremely effective in raising awareness and the funds we need to make our vision a reality. walked up ashore, littered with thousands of starfish, beached and dying after a storm. A young man was picking them up and flinging them back into the ocean. Why do you bother, the old man scoffed. You're not saving enough to make a difference. The young man picked up another starfish and sent it spinning back into the water. Made a difference to that one, he said. Thank you, Willie, for making such a huge difference. Although uh, it was my brain that started Hoist, but I want to introduce you to the Willie Peretti of the east side of the parish. Chris Kaufman, where are you? Chris, this is my partner in crime, and where I do one side of the parish, this man needs a, a round of applause because he helps me. Chef's apprentice soon led her to other opportunities throughout the country and the world. She ultimately set down roots in New Orleans. Her French Quarter restaurant, Bayona, is loved by locals and tourists alike. And her newest venture, Mondo, is part of the fabric of Lakeview in the heart of New Orleans. A 2002 restaurant magazine named Bayona one of the top 50 restaurants in the world. And in 2000, she was awarded the James Beard Lifetime Achievement Award. Her first book, Crescent City Cooking, Unforgettable uh, Recipes from Susan Spicer's New Orleans, was released back at Here Tell uh, Her Story. Please join me in welcoming Chef Susan Spicer. story, uh, such as it is. It's a pretty long one since I'm getting up there in years, but uh, I am one of seven kids who was born to uh, a, a naval officer from Waycross, Georgia, and a very vivacious uh, Scandinavian mother uh, from Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, I was born in Key West, Florida, and uh, I was the sixth of seven kids. I have to say that my very first uh, mentor and, and inspiration was, of course, my mother, Alice, and that's who I dedicated my book to, and she is now 91 years old, uh, yeah, still still having dinner parties, and because she was Danish and she grew up in South America, her father was kind of an adventurer, and uh, she lived in Colombia, Venezuela, which is where she met and married my father, um, and then we moved to the Netherlands right before we moved here to New Orleans and uh, uh, she learned Indonesian cooking over there and so, so every meal um, at the Spicer table was an adventure. I started cooking in 1979 at a restaurant called the Louis XVI, um, which was kind of one of the first uh, real French restaurants in New Orleans as opposed to like a Creole French restaurant. I actually got into cooking, uh, just cooking socially with a girlfriend of mine who went to culinary school in France and then came back to New Orleans and we started a little catering business. And I started helping her and we would cook together socially. And um, you know, I, I found that I really enjoyed it. And she actually uh, got a job as a chef at a lunch restaurant down on St. Charles Avenue. And at the time I was working for a printing company and she hired, she called up and said, come to work with me in the kitchen. And, and then she said, that, you know, 
I can get you seven dollars an hour. <laughs> This, of course, was in 1979. It sounded like a fortune or something. Uh, so I went to work there, and I have to say, that's the first job that I ever got fired from. First and only job. <laughs> and we were fired by the manager, uh, we were both fired by the manager for having bad attitudes. And I think that stemmed from the fact that he kept giving us dishes. He kept creating dishes that he wanted us to cook, and we would refuse to make them because they were really good. Bad news thing. He said the good news is we're closing for you know Fourth of July holiday. The bad news is you won't be here when we come back. <laughs> and I summoned all the dignity that I could, and I said, I think you're making a mistake. And uh, he's selling insurance now, so I was fortunate to go from there to to the Louis XVI, which is where I really found my mentor Danielle Bruno, uh, who pretty much ignored me for about the first month that I worked there, and then when I started persisting with questions and asking, um, you know, reading the books in his office and asking lots and lots of questions and pestering, and he started showing me more and more things. And eventually, he became a great mentor to me and pushed me to do a lot of things that I really didn't have the courage to do on my own. He had more confidence in me than I did myself. And I think that's really the definition of a great mentor, is somebody who really pushes you outside of your comfort zone, but is there to sort of catch you, you know, if you, if you fail, um, you know, or have a setback. And, and he did that for me for many years. You know, once I got my first chef position in 1982, after working the summer in Paris, uh, with another friend and mentor, uh, Roland Jouan, and I came back and opened my first uh, restaurant as chef in 1982, which was called Sapphire Bear, and it was on St. Charles Avenue, and it was very, very tough because I had only been cooking professionally for about three years at that point, and everybody that I had to hire had a longer resume than I did, so I was terrified. I spent a lot of time in the office crying. Uh, I'm a crier, I am tell you right now. Eventually, I came to realize that, you know, I could be a, I could be a leader because I was willing to set certain standards and adhere to those standards and, and show people how to adhere to those standards and to make food with a passion that was really delicious and, um, you know, not let yourself put out something that, you know, that you know isn't good. And, uh, the thing about cooking that I really love is that it satisfies me uh, on a lot of different levels. It's very physically demanding, it's also emotionally very demanding, and uh, mentally, you know, I actually have to use math and things like that. But, uh, I guess I just want to talk about uh, mentoring and how important it is and how that has become a, a you know, very important part of what I do that many of my former employees and sous chefs, the ones that I really uh, had a lot of faith in, have gone on to become uh, very successful in other careers. Uh, at least three of them are now my competitors, thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> Donald Blake, John Harris, my career. I was a single career girl with uh, two cats for about 25 years, and then I um, I met my husband, and I got a husband, two kids, and a dog all in one day. <laughs> my life changed pretty dramatically. That was eight years ago. I've lived in Lakeview um, ever since I opened my own. I bought a little house out there, and, and we ended up, uh, my husband and his two children ended up moving into the house with me. The house burned down in 1997 when I opened, uh, right when I was opening Spice Inc., which was a little, uh, well, not so little actually, a specialty food market and a takeout place in the warehouse district, um, which was locationally challenged. And uh, I had it open for about two years and, and closed it. So I have known failure and uh, have gotten over it. And then, and now I'm proud. Interesting thing. So my house burned down in 97, and I rebuilt it and uh, added on a little bit, and then got married in 2004. Uh, and uh, Katrina came along and flooded the house. <laughs> so, uh, fortunately, my husband's from Jackson, Mississippi, so we had only had to drive three hours north, and we moved up there with his uh, brother and sister-in-law, and their two kids, and our two kids, and their dog, and our two cats. And you know, we lived together for a, a couple of months until we rented a house up there with the kids in school. And, and I started commuting back and forth to open Bionet again. 
um, which was great because I actually, you know, we lost a lot of stuff, but I gained uh, a, a wonderful friend, a very, very close friend of my sister-in-law, and, uh, you know, we're, we're more like sisters now than we were before. So we rebuilt the house again and added on again. <laughs> so, and then in the last, not this past June, but June of 2010, I decided to open Mondo, which is a kind of a family-friendly, more casual restaurant in Lakeview. And it just seemed like a good fit for the neighborhood. It seemed like the neighborhood, which was really starting to come back, uh, was really ready for a new place. And uh, it's, it's been a big success. And again, I have, uh, I have a woman chef there. I have a woman manager who's a dear friend of mine, Jane. Uh, Cindy Crosby is our chef. My partner at Bayona is a woman, Regina Keeper. We've been partners for 22 years at Bayona. Um, our, our manager is a woman who started with us as a uh, waiter many, many years ago. So this is not, you know, not really intentional, but it's just, you know, it's very fulfilling. It's been great to uh, develop these relationships uh, with these other enterprising and wonderful women. And I feel very grateful to have uh, grown up in New Orleans. It's a, it's a fabulous community of people that really love life, you know, the greater New Orleans area, which course extends over here and uh, I just you know my husband and I tried to make a, a short list of places that we would go if the big flood happened again and uh, so far we haven't we haven't been able to choose any other place than where we are so um, I'm just very happy to be part of the, this community and Thank <laughs> you. 